this is the adventuring engineer here and I'm going to be showing you how to create an IAR embedded workbench project setup for the STM32 F4 discovery board. All right, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is oops, create some sort of folder to put all of your files in. Okay? So the first thing you want to do, create a folder here for your project settings files, okay? I call it the warm, or however you say that, I don't know. And then the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna download all of the peripheral libraries from the STM32, or ST Microelectronics website. Um, so I've gone ahead and pre-downloaded those. So um, there should be some include files, there should be some source files, and then there's a startup.s. These are all, I guess you don't have to use these, but they're highly recommended. Open one of these just so you can see what it's all about. So, yep, just a bunch of good stuff. They provide all these helper functions regarding those peripherals. All right, so now we're gonna wanna open up the IAR Embedded Workbench. Now you wanna make sure that you downloaded the Embedded Workbench for the ARM processors, okay? That's important. The version, not so much, but make sure it's for ARM. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna create a new workspace. Now this is gonna be a workspace of multiple projects. So if we go up here and we save workspace as, we're going to want to put this into our folder that we just created. I'm going to call this setup project. We can go ahead and save that. Then we can go up here and create a new project. Project, create new project. Uh, you can do this one, in which case it just it's the same as an empty project, except it auto includes in main.c file. I'm going to go with empty project. So I always put this in the eWarm as well. Set up project. It's going to go ahead and create that project. All right, so now we have this project created. We are going to want to add and remove some files. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my file explorer. I'm gonna create a new file. It's just gonna be an empty main.c. Yep. All right, let's add that. So if we go add, add files. We're going to go up a folder and we're just going to add this one right here. So you can see this is our main.c. We can type whatever we want. I'm not going to type anything. Now that we have the main.c added, I'm going to go ahead and add all of the peripheral files that I added before. Or that I copied earlier. Go ahead and add a few groups for sanity. Just replicating the file hierarchy that's already on the hard drive. All right, now that we have all the files included that we need, 
we're going to go ahead and start configuring the project. So the first thing we need to do is select the proper device. Um, now the STM32 F4 Discovery Board uses the F407VG chip. So you want to select that one. It'll configure some other stuff, save you a little bit of time. Um, the next thing we want to do is we need to set some preprocessor options. So in this first one, what we want to do is we need to add the search directories for the peripherals that we just added. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so we've got all the search directories added. Now we're going to need to define some symbols or pound define some symbols. So the first one, we need to enable all of the peripheral libraries that we just added. So we're going to do that with this line of code. We then need to enable the uh, processor. So this is just a peripheral. This just allows some options in the peripherals. And then this next one is very important. This one took me a long time to figure out. But you have to set this value to 8 million. Otherwise, the master clock will not be configured correctly because in the data sheet, they say the clock is 168 megahertz, you know, yada, yada, yada. If you do not put this right here, the clock will not be 168 megahertz unless you got really lucky somehow. Luckier than me. All right, so the next thing we need to do, and this one took me a while to figure out as well, um, this driver. Do not use the simulator, otherwise it won't actually put the code on the on the uh, the board. It'll just simulate putting it on the board, which is incredibly frustrating when you're trying to get an LED to blink. So you're going to want to select ST Link. Everything else in there looks good. So now, because we picked ST Link down here, we're going to have to go configure this driver. Um, I always switch this to SWD. I have no idea what JTAG means, but I do SWD. And I program through the USB port on the STM32F4. Um, it looks like the clocks are all good. All right, and that should be it. Um, there is one more important piece of information is when you have we're going to add some lines of code to this right here. All right. This function right here is very important. This one will go and update the clock. If you don't call this, the clocks will be all messed up in your project. And it's incredibly frustrating because every time you grab a new board, the clock will be different. This one goes and it reads the calibration data that's from the manufacturer on the chip already regarding the clocks so that you can get 168 megahertz. So, hmm. so if we go to system STM32F4 discovery <coughs> let's search for this oh man All right, so that's this function. As it states here, it just goes and 
Yeah, you can read this. You can pause it and read it. I'm not going to read it out loud for you. But there you go. That should be it. Your IAR Embedded Workbench project should download. I'm not going to do it right now. I don't have the board connected. But that'll get you started. Thanks for watching.